Yes, we totally did. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Kelsey. My name is Joe Ash. And we're your pre-show hosts this morning. Come on, we're so excited to see you guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, we haven't asked this in a while. How about you guys tell us where you guys are watching from? That'd be so cool. We can't see you guys now. There's one. But um, <laughs> yeah, we would love to see where you guys are watching from. So chat it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, engaging in the chat. Maybe you're watching outside, enjoying the beautiful sunshine that we've been having. Yep, or maybe you just woke up and you're watching indoors. And you yep. got a little bit of sun coming in. But maybe you're watching. you're watching in the UK right now. Hello, our UK friends. Yes, yeah, so you're here in Surrey, kind of watching two minutes away from here. Maybe. Yeah, so well, just yeah. explain a little bit about what um, the, the pre-show is about. It really just is a time for us to remind ourselves that people exist. It's a time to connect with them, to have fun. Mm -hmm. It'll be a really good time. We've got announcements yep. and games for you guys. Oh man, I'm so excited for the game. It's gonna be really good. So good. Yeah. So let's see where a couple of you guys, Carly's watching with her cat. Nice. I read Placido saying he's watching from his bedroom. Cool. Yes, All I've good. Been there. Wherever you guys are watching from, we're very, we're curious. Yeah. Come on, we come don't on, know, come on. We, we know that people have been just watching from all over the world right now. Yeah. Even if you're not in Surrey, I think they have some friends in Saskatchewan too. Saskatchewan, so, maybe yeah. the UK. We've watching it from the stage. <laughs> the Alexandra, stage. that's awesome. Yep. We've got team watching and engaging. Mm -hmm. so. Worship's going to be really good, by the way, Alexandra. Living room. Watching with Mike and Surrey. Yes, <laughs> yes, Mike. yes. Awesome. Nothing crazy so far, but it's so good to see you guys. Oh, Manitoba, Winnipeg. That's awesome. Hello, awesome. hello. Yeah, that's so cool. So, so cool. So, so good. But yeah, we're so happy to see you guys engaging in the chat and just seeing where you're watching from. It's so cool that we just get to connect on here. Yeah. So we're just gonna hop right into a couple of announcements this morning. We don't have that many. We just got two this morning. Yeah. First off is that Mother's Day is coming. Yes. So for all the husbands out there, all the children out there, you're this welcome. is your countdown, your reminder, <laughs> yeah. so you don't forget. Marketing your calendars, yep. May 9th, it's coming up. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a we've got some stuff planned and it's coming up. But yeah, just keep an eye on the social media for more of those details and to check our email list at her, uh, hello at horizonchurch.ca if you're yeah. not already part of it. So good. I love you, mom, in advance, but also now. We love you, mom. Um, second, it's not really an announcement, it's a prayer support. So last week, or no, this weekend, um, we actually had Set Free happen, and it was mm -hmm. all online. 20 people were there, and it was so, so good. Kelsey, so how do we explain a little bit about Set Free? Yeah, so for those of you that don't know what Set Free is, Set Free was just a chance for people to deal with the hurts, the hang up, and the sin just in their life. So, so, so good. Yeah, and just to highlight a little bit about what happened, mm -hmm. one person said that they felt safe to share and deal with the things that they were walking with. So she literally Really felt 10 pounds lighter wow. after having dealt with some of the issues from her from her past and whatnot. She felt jumping up and telling, mm -hmm. she felt like jumping up and telling everyone about how much better she felt. Yeah. Isn't that so good? So, so good, so guys. Good. Come on. Well, anyways, that was it for announcements and we're hopping right into our game. Let's go. We know it's been a while, like yes. three weeks a yes, while. Yes, yes. So yeah, we're yeah. playing Guess That Sound. Yep, and right now, the prize yep. is at $30. $30. Oh my goodness, I hope you guys are excited. How much time do we get? We got a minute. A minute. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta tell, play it out. Um, we're gonna give you guys a hint. We're so gonna give Kelsey a big pulls hint. It up. As Kelsey pulls up the sound, the big hint is, um, if you've had a pet, you've heard it before. You've probably heard it, you've depending probably. on the pet you've had. But I'm yeah. gonna play the sound. Okay, okay so right. that's the hint. This is, this is, the t this is your sound. I'm, I'm not good with technology, apparently. Just one go. more time. There it is. All right, let's, let's guess your sound. Or guess that sound. So if you guys heard that, that is our sound. Doggy door, no. Can opener, no. no. So close. So maybe. We'll give you guys until Doggy 20 seconds door. left. Ooh, we're going along the right track here. Something to do with close. a pet. I'm going to play it again. Oh, oh, he got Karen it! Fuller. Hamster Karen wheel! Fuller. It is a hamster wheel! 
<laughs> yes, that's it. Thirty dollars. Email Daniel at Horizon Church. CA. Congratulations. That's thirty bucks. But that was it for the game. So tune in next week yes. for a new sound. It's gonna be good, guys. Service is coming up. So yeah. we got worship. Yeah. Get ready. Least distraction screen. You guys know the deal. Get ready to praise, man. We're so excited to have worship in the. We'll message. see you at the post show. See you guys. Good morning, church. Let's worship together. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, this bag of bones. Just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. 
This is my surrender. This is my surrender.
worship this morning and we're just putting a quick pause and we will close out with the song again good morning family my name is Shanda and this morning I just want to share one praise report and then we're gonna dive into some praise all week the song and the refrain that have just been ringing in my heart is the goodness of God and it's just reminded me of so many ways and so many times that I have personally seen the goodness and the faithfulness of God in my life. And he's done it for me and he will do it for you. I was talking to a young man just yesterday. His wife had a baby, ended up in ICU with COVID and um, pneumonia complications. And within four days, I believe it was, with less than a week, of being in the ICU, the church was praying, they had so many people praying. His wife actually went home from ICU, directly home, and the nurses and the doctors said, we can't explain this. We don't understand it, we don't know why she's responded so well. And he said to me, he said, I just was there and I just was praying and I was worshiping. And just in this moment of faith and expectation and celebration as we worship, I just wanted to share that praise report, but we're also gonna pray with that same expectation. I was reading in Ephesians chapter three this morning, and verse 18 jumped out at me. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is His love for us. So just as we transition into praying right now, I really felt this morning that there was just gonna be an absolute release of healing for physical ailments this morning while we prayed. So family, I wanna encourage you right now, wherever you are watching, whether this is a Thursday or a Tuesday morning, or you're around the world right now watching with us, wherever you have a physical need in your body, just put your hand there. I felt like the Lord say someone that's been struggling with incredible pain in their knees. I don't know if you're waiting for surgery or 
or you've just had one, but I felt like God said he was gonna touch someone's knees this morning. I also felt like someone who's having issues in their kidneys. I feel like it's been an ongoing, long time issue. God's gonna heal you this morning. Also those that are struggling with cancer, I'm gonna pray for you this morning. I'm just believing that God is gonna shrivel up those tumors in the mighty name of Jesus. So family, gather with me right now, wherever you are, just begin to pray out in your spiritual language. If you don't have a need this morning, just be praying for our Horizon family. And Father God, I just come to you right now with faith and expectation. Father, the promise, even as we were singing, we are healed. Father, I just thank you this morning that every individual that has a need and needs to see God move in a miraculous way in their life. Father, I pray that this morning that the miracle healing power of Jesus would be extended into every home and every situation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you, Horizon family, for worshiping with us this morning. Before Pastor Craig comes up, we've just got a quick video. Hey, Horizon fam. Head over to our Horizon Kids YouTube channel now to check out this week's Sunday vlog. Horizon Kids Sunday vlog number 58 is up and ready for you to watch. This week, we continue our theme for the month, which is reconnect, build the bridge. Bridges connect one thing to another, just like peace connects us with the people around us. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. On this week's Sunday vlog, our bottom line is, you can show you care about others by walking away from a fight. Check out the fun we have where we play another fun game. And we dig into God's word to see what it can teach us about living in peace with one another. And we also learn about peace from the wisdom of a man named Isaac. Genesis. He chooses peace instead of fighting multiple times. His story helps us to know how we can live with peace as well. It's a great message today. So make sure you check it out. Your kids will love it. See you on YouTube. Bye! Bye. On the chat, there was, that could be from uh, somewhere in Africa to uh, the UK to 
down the street. Those of you that are on your back porch, wherever you're from, welcome and hope you feel right at home this morning as we worship together online. I'm just going to open the service here so I can watch on the chat. I can watch what's going on. Feel free to interact on that chat as well and respond and be a part of what's going on. It helps you to engage uh, and helps you to get more out of the service as you engage and be a part of it. If you're in the room, we'd love it to be hearing you say amen or that's good or stop, pastor, say yes or say amen, do something. But on the chat, it's a lot harder. So use your chat function. You've got all kinds of emojis. Make sure you use the right ones. Be careful if you sent one that was nasty to somebody. Don't automatically go to your saved ones. Done that before. <laughs> All of us probably have. But just been a great week. Uh, I know it's been a very, very challenging week, but it's often we forget what God's doing. And Shanda alluded to it uh, as well, that God is good in every season, no matter what we're going through, because we know he knows the end from the beginning. He's moving us through. Uh, this past uh, Friday and Saturday, I think we had around 20 people went through a set free retreat, with, which if you've been a part of that, it's just a wonderful time where God begins the process of setting you free. We're going to talk more about that next week. And and uh, if you haven't been a part of it, watch for it happening. This was entirely online. People from all over the place joining together. Jesus still works. God still moves. If your heart is open and ready, and even today, God's still working. God's still moving. He can speak to you. So open your heart and be ready for that. As well, this weekend, uh, there's about, I think, 27 families, probably about 500 meals be, were distributed this week because of your generosity to families in our community. So people are eating today because you responded to God. No matter what's happening in your world, you're just being a part of letting his kingdom come and his will be done and be kind and be good in the middle of it as we proclaim that Jesus is the answer for the crazy world that we're in. Yeah, you could write amen, do, do a thumbs up. I'm watching right here. Come on. Somebody's going to, who's going to be first? I know there's a little delay, but I'm going to watch. I'm going to be watching. But in, in just the reality, how many of us would say that, that our world's a little crazy right now? Anybody? Anybody in the room? Anybody? With, like, there's some crazy things going on in our world. Huge division, political stuff going on, ancient landmarks of, of life and morality being moved. Uh, some things that should change are being changed. But there's just so much flux, and, and we're really in a moment right now. That's It's one of those moments that will be marked in history, and, and it's so important to know how to respond and what to do in the middle of it right now. And because it's hard to discern sometimes with all the chaos, what's next? We started this series last week called What's Next, flowing out of Easter as Jesus starts and saves your life and comes into your life. And you think, well, that's it. That's the beginning. That's it. But it's the end of something, a life of living for myself. And it's the beginning of something else. It's the what's next that God has for your life. And it's so important how you answer that question, what's next? Because it's easy to just get it, slip into just getting by and surviving and watching another Netflix series, waiting for a lockdown to be over. Come on, we want the lockdown to be over. There's, there's been some things that have been challenging, even in how governments have been uh, operating in this, that are getting into the realm of, I don't know, uh, a charter of rights and freedoms. And I know there's strong feelings on either side of that. So don't blow up my chat on it right now. All I'm saying is that there's a lot of stuff going on that how you answer what's next is really going to be important, probably more than ever in this season. What's next? It's tempting in a world gone crazy to just put our head down and forget what's going on and do what's in front of me. And there's some value in that for sure. But we forget what God might be doing in the middle of it. Maybe you're a university student and you're like, I don't know, pastor, I'm just going to get a good job and, and make money and buy a nice house and then eventually die and get a good coffin. Like there's more than that. What's next? So easy to just slip into a holding pattern when things are moving so much and where, where we're just so not moving in any direction at all. We're just kind of there, no movement. How you answer what's next is incredibly important for you. And not just a once in a while kind of ethereal question, but actually daily living in that moment of what's next for me today? Because God is not living in yesterday. He's living in today. And he's coming to each of us today. Knows what's going on in our lives today. Knows what you don't have 
today. And how you answer that what's next question is incredibly important. And I referred to this question or this scripture last week out of Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish or live carelessly. And the message uh, translation says it this way. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Isn't that so true? That there's so much stumbling around right now, lack of clarity, lack of good movement, all kinds of craziness and confusion happening because people are not aware of what God is doing right now. But when we understand and attend to what God is doing, then we are most blessed. And it's easy right now to get drawn into, and sometimes might even be interesting, some of the speculation of, is this the end times? Is Jesus coming back? Is is he coming back tomorrow? Who was the Antichrist? What's going on? Is that thing I'm going to get? Am I going to get a tracking device? Like, what's happening? All kinds of interesting conspiracy theories, and and it can be interesting. I, I get that to speculate on what might be. But we must be very careful as Christ followers to not buy into any philosophy or any theology that gets us off of what God is actually doing. Sometimes we're paying more attention to what the enemy might be doing and less attention to what God is actually doing in this season. Because when we pay attention to what God is doing, then we will be most blessed. Then we will live out what God has called us to be and do as his people, as his church, as the kingdom of God. I want to remind you what Jesus has to say about God's vision. Because when we attend to what God reveals, then we are most blessed. Who we, want, who we are is most blessed. This is what it was said of Jesus. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness has not overcome it. When Jesus came into the world, he ushered in a kingdom that is light, showing the contrast to that darkness, no matter what it's doing in the world, will not overcome Jesus. He also said this, from the time of John the baptizer, that's the one who came before him until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. The kingdom of heaven is advancing in the world right now. That's my perspective because that's the perspective of Jesus. Jesus also said this, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it, will not prevail against it, will not stop it. So if the light is shining and darkness can't overcome it, that's the vision of God. So if Jesus is in you, you have a part to play. I love these words. The light is actively shining. The kingdom is actively advancing. The church is actively being built by Jesus. There is still a forward moving, overcoming spirit of God moving in the world. That's the vision of God. So don't be dragged into, led around by, you might want to be aware of what's happening for sure, but don't let what's happening or might be happening or could be happening take you off the mission of what God is doing in the world. He is building his church. He's building you. The kingdom of God is forcibly advancing through you. The light of heaven is shining through you. So don't retreat. Don't step back. The vision must lead. That's why we talked last week about my purpose is to make a difference because you got to keep it out in front of you there someday because sometimes you're just lost in the weeds and we need to lift up our eyes a little bit and say, whoa, the purpose of my life, still to make a difference. Yeah, but what's going on right now? Still to make a difference. But do you understand my business is struggling? It's still to make a difference. Do you understand that our family's in trouble right now? It's still to make a difference. In other words, in all of that, Jesus is alive, he's moving, he's advancing, and we are not to live in fear, we're not to shrink back, we're to stand up as people of God with our shoulders back, our head held high, our hopes ever greater, because greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. 
What's leading you right now? What's next? Depends on your perspective of what God might be doing, what God is doing. Because he's, his way is the way of life. It says this in Psalm 16, you will show me the way of life. In other words, no matter what's going on, you show me the way that's life all the way through it. John 10 and 10, the thief comes to st- only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I, Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So there is a battle going on. There is darkness trying to, to overcome light. But remind myself, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come to give me life to the full. In other words, it's not dependent on what's going on around me. I can be a force for good and for God. I can be a force of transformation in a world that's seemingly going to hell in a handbasket and raise up a standard. When we raise up a standard, the Spirit of God raises that standard up. And no matter what the enemy is coming in like a flood, the Spirit of God is saying this far, no further. Revival can still come. People can still be changed. Nations can still be turned in a day. God God can do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or even think. So I bring that perspective to the table and say, what's next? What's next? He knows the way of light. You know, I think sometimes the reason why some of us have some issues with what's going on in our life is because Jesus is is an advisor to us. We bring him into our life to advise us when he said, follow him. No, 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 no. Jesus, I want to know what you think about this. Yeah, that's good. But also, Jesus, where do you want to lead me? What do you want to do in my life? What's next for me? How are you going to take me forward? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Where do you... And we have this perspective that Jesus is, yes, he's walking alongside relationally, but he is leading the way. The program of God in Exodus 6, we talked about it last week. It says out of Exodus 6, 6 to 7, I am the Lord and I will bring you out. So he brings us out from the yoke of slavery. Then he begins to free us from the mindsets of slavery. We're going to talk about that next week. And then he will redeem us, redeem us and then he will take us to be his own people. Last week we talked about that we'll be the people of God in the world. We'll be ones that make a difference. Today we're going to talk about living in that redemption that God has done for your life. And redemption simply means that Jesus died, buried, and rose again to take you out of the clutches and the power of sin and deliver you into the purpose of God. So that instead of being under the power of sin, I suddenly begin to move in the purpose of God. When I was locked up, I've been freed. When I couldn't move, I can begin to move. When there was no way out, there was a way forward. That's what happens at redemption. So when I say what's next, it didn't stop at, well, I know God. No, God's called you to make a difference and he's redeemed you for it. He brought you out. Romans 12 and 2 says this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this, of this world, but let God transform you Take a moment there. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. In other words, you're in the world, but look what God can do in the middle of it all. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Why? Then you will learn to know God's will for your life. That's purpose, which is good, which is pleasing, which is perfect. In other words, it's absolutely full. It's the right for you. The behaviors of the world, the customs of the world are pressing in on all of us to think a certain way, to act a certain way, to only be this and only uh, if you don't believe this and we're going to cancel you or if you're not uh, aligning in this way, we're going to break you. But we can live from the inside out by letting Jesus begin to transform us and begin to change the way we think. But we have to resist the pressure of conformity. We have to watch that you don't listen to all the same voices. Oh, I'm just, and going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories and and looking at just feeding yourself one way of thinking, but just allowing Jesus to set the agenda, Jesus to lead your thinking, Jesus to lead your family, Jesus to lead your business, Jesus to lead his church, because the pressure of the world to conform, to put out the light, to stop the advance, to stop the movement of God is always there, but Jesus inside of us begins to press against the mold and break the mold so we can be what God's called us to be. Because Jesus 
redeems us from the power of sin so that he can restore us to the purpose of God. I let him in, let him lead me because God wants to reveal his will and purpose for your life. Anyone today need a thinking upgrade? I know I do. I need to think a lot more like heaven. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, think like heaven. Set your heart on things above. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Set my minds. It doesn't mean I don't be aware of what's going on. Stick my head in, in a box and not know what's going on. It simply means that my agenda is set by heaven and the perspective of heaven. God wants to reveal his way and his purpose for you because he's created you to do something. We talked about make a difference, but most of us get lost in, well, how? Because I want to make a difference, but I don't know how. That's kind of what purpose is. Part purpose is who you are and how God's working in your life to use you to bring change to the world. Because it's so easy to get distracted from the purpose of God and be I'm going to walk off camera, but it's okay. And go off into some place where like, oh, I don't know. And you find yourself in some place and you're out of the picture of what God's doing. Out of the picture. But we get onto the agenda of God and he suddenly has something for you. And there's three common enemies of purpose. The first is comparison. Where we like, how, how, what, when, where, how. But we compare ourselves to someone else. We wish we had what they had. We wish we could speak like they speak. We wish we had the clothes that they had, the house that they had, the resources that they have, the bring, upbringing that they have. And, we, and then we put ourselves in a box and say, I can't do it because I'm not like them. Or we're confused. Sometimes it's just confusion. We don't know what. We don't know how. And we, we, we're trying to figure it out, but we just can't. And so we get paralyzed. The paralysis of analysis and wanting it to be perfect. And we don't, we don't step into our purpose. And then there's sometimes we pursue counterfeit purposes where we think we're made to make money. We think we're just made to pursue pleasure. We think we're just made to, to acquire more knowledge or, or have success or get the right job or go after some leadership position and, and in themselves may not be bad, but they can sometimes be a counterfeit for what God wants to do in and through you. And I had one just more I came to my mind. The other one is comfort. Just comes to my mind right now where we're comfortable where we are and we're actually not open to God moving us into a new space. We're not ready to be transformed into and so that God can make us understand his good, pleasing, and perfect will for our life. Are any of those an enemy for you right now? Comparison, confusion, the counterfeit, or comfort. Comfort of what was. God has a purpose for you. He's redeemed you to restore you to the purpose of God. Redeemed you from the power of sin to redeem you to the purpose of God for your life. And so many people don't know or what or how and purpose is how you make a difference. It's the person you are. It's the gifts you've been given. It's the unique talents and resources that you have. It's the personality that you have. It's the talents you, of who you've been given. It's the time and place that you're in. God reveals himself, all pointing to your purpose. Your design of who you are reveals the destiny of God for your life. Sometimes we try so hard, I'm going to do this or do that. Your design reveals your destiny. I want to show you something. You've probably been wondering what these... The last little while, um, I've been putting some meals together a little bit more. And that's my COVID thing, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I several times it's come across these things called, I had to look it up, lemon zest is needed for the meal. Lemon zest is needed. I was like, lemon zest, what is that? For those of you that have no clue, it's this, you, you what's the word I'm looking for? You get the skin off, you shave it into little pieces, just shave it, what's that? This is close enough for my zester. It makes the point. You get the skin and, the, and you shave it and it's called zest and it adds flavor and does something. It's helpful. And it's really good when you, and you notice it when it's missing. Now there's a certain, through. it's called the zester, but it's kind of like one of these. I brought this because the zester is so small. And you shave it off. Now when it needs the, the, the zest, I could say, 
All of the, well, all of these are necessary to make the meal. If I use the right thing for what it was intended to, something good will happen. And sometimes when we're supposed to make zest, we think, well, I'm, I'm supposed to make zest and we try, we're the spoon and we're trying to make some zest out of it. This, some of you have never seen a spoon this big. We have had this since our children were small. I'll just leave it at that and that. And so you think, wow, what could this be? How can I make zest? And I get frustrated that zest can't come out of me because I'm a spoon or I'm trying to make some zest with this little knife here and trying, this is very sharp, this is my fillet knife, and trying to make some zest and I'm frustrated that that can't work. But when I actually use something that's made for, I think some's coming out right there, something good happens and zest begins to come out. There it is, oh, it smells so good. When you actually use what it's intended for, something amazing happens and it's able to do its part in making the meal or in making a difference. And some of us are this and we're trying to be this. Or, But when this knife, instead of trying to make zest, the meal also needs some lemon slices. Whoa. Perfect. This doesn't work so well. But when this is being used for its purpose, it can do its part in making the meal, making the meal of what is needed. And the slices are made. Then when it's time to make some juice, because it always seems like they want juice, I can use this, put it on a plate, and press this down and make juice. And I'll make a lot of juice. It's squirting out all over the place. In other words, your purpose is tied to how God designed you. And we need to stop rejecting what God has made, embrace who he's made, and say, God, what would you do with me? I'm a knife, and it's time for me to sharpen up and say, God, I'm available, and stop worrying about what the zester is doing and start embracing what God has made me to do. I have a purpose. God's hand is on my life. Let me be used by you, God. How can I discover my purpose, though, the, the first way God reveals our purpose is, and I'm going to go through these quick, is the call from birth. I love this verse in Jeremiah 1, 4 to 8, and I want you to follow along. Pay attention. I know. Put your coffee down. Not you. Put it down. Before, somebody say before. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Before you were born, I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. And then Jeremiah says, ah, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. In other words, I feel like I'm a knife when you're actually asking me to be a zester. But the Lord said to him, do not say I'm too young. You must go everywhere I send you. Say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Before you were formed, he knew you. Before you were born, he set you apart. God already had a plan for your life in motion. Before you were ever thought of, God was thinking of you. You are not an afterthought to God. You might think that you were an accident, but you were called in the plan and the purpose of God. You might think that you were, you were uh, rejected, that nobody had time for you, that no one cares about you, but you were already in the plan of God. That God, is, God has designed you to be a part, to have a purpose to play. He, he has a spot to send you. He has a way he wants to speak through you. He is with you in the middle of it all. And that's why it's so important to us as, as people of God. The unborn have value. The unborn have a purpose in God. And we want to do our best part to help unborn children be born. Because those ones that are, that are being snuffed out right now could be part of what God is doing in the world. That their lives are not just have moment when they're born. Before they were ever born. Before they were ever thought of. They, God knew them. God sees them. They're part of what God wants to do. And let me say this. That part of the reason every time God's about to do something, the enemy goes on a killing spree. When Moses was going to be coming, tried, the, the enemy went on a killing spree. When Jesus was about to be born, the enemy went on a killing spree because he's looking to kill the deliverers. And, and the enemy is looking to kill revivalists and deliverers before they're ever born. So we want to be a church that says, if you're in a crisis pregnancy center, a place, I mean, we want to help you. We want to see that baby be born. It has incredible life. I don't know where this is coming from right now, but I want to speak to life, life, life. When, you, when they're growing up, we want to make sure 
sure they have enough food when they're going through challenges. We want to provide youth programs and children's programs that remind them of how valuable they are when they're wherever they're at from 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 womb to tomb, you are incredibly valuable. You are have purpose. You have pl plan. God's hand is on and moving. And so we stand for life all across the board. And let me say this. If you're one who, who has had an abortion, thank God for his grace. His forgiveness is for you. I'm not condemning you. I don't know your situation. I just know this, that Jesus forgives and he can help you to move forward. He loves you. We're for you. No cond condemnation. Because God created me on purpose for a purpose. God created you on purpose for a purpose. So God's call has gone out from birth. And then there's another way God reveals our purpose is a growing awareness. As you go through life and you start to go through experiences and you have interests and successes and failures and things that grip your heart. And I think of Jesus when in Matthew 9, it says this, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then the next couple of verses, he calls his disciples and appoints them to minister to them. In other words, his, he was moved in his gut and he did something about it. He, he paid attention. He was aware of what was hitting him. Pay attention to the gut wrenches. Pay attention to the irritations about injustice. Pay attention to issues that bother you because it's often a clue that God's purpose is about to be revealed in you and through you. Pray it through and see what Jesus would happen. You know, right here, we were, I was talking with a group of people yesterday about how God's done this in our church. The African Children's Choir is now a, has raised millions and millions of dollars, fed hundreds and no thousands upon thousands of orphans and and the poor uh, in Africa and beyond but it started because Ray Barnett who who has had this place and he allowed his heart to be gripped by kids that were had been brutalized and orphaned in the war uh, in Uganda in the early 80s and just up outside my right up in a room up there said what would it look like if we did something about that and, a, and the African Children's Choir was born and, and so many kids' lives have been saved and transformed because he allowed that awareness. What could God be doing right now? Didn't get bitter about it, didn't get angry about it, didn't hide from it, but said, Jesus, could you use me? Night Shift Street Ministries is incredible. But it, and it's doing so many things, counseling, it's raising money for the poor, it has, it's employing people that were once on the street, it's feeding people, it's doing so many great things. Mary Ann Connor from this church allowed herself to be aware of the needs of our street fence. And she said, what could I do? And started with nothing. And God has done exceedingly abundantly above all else because she paid attention to what was happening, allowed her heart to be drawn. Night to Shine, which we've just seen over the last number, uh, few years here, Sharon, uh, Sharon Premiacara and her mom, Helen, they allowed their hearts to be stirred for people with diverse abilities, people that in many cases are just kind of on the sidelines, marginalized, not able to, be, to be participate. So they created and were, uh, sponsored this event for people with diverse abilities so that they can be celebrated and, and told that God loves them and that we love them and a prom night in this room and it'll happen again. Hundreds of people just being celebrated and loved on by the church right where they are because they allowed their heart to be stirred. But maybe for you, you have a business and you'll need to allow God to stir you to be prosperous with a purpose. I know somebody who, in our church family, who was at one time making cakes for a few friends and now she's just like, Mandy, growing like crazy all the time. Businesses, uh, her business is growing and growing and growing. I talked to her and she's like, I'm so busy. Incredible. She allowed her to start, to, oh, God could do something. God could use me in that way. Maybe you have a burning desire to see kids become all that God has called them to be and you'll start a, a homework club at your local neighborhood uh, uh, community center. Or maybe you'll, God forbid, helping kids ministry. Or maybe you'll, because your heart's stirred for, for kids in poverty, then you say, what could I do? Maybe you'll start collecting returnables in your complex and gather them and sponsor a kid every month. Who knows? 
but allow our hearts to be stirred. Be aware of what moves you. You know, you might feel that though your story is too messed up, it's too, too, blow, uh, too uh, chaotic. How could I? But well, uh, Genesis 50 and 20 says this about the, the enemy. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. In other words, if your life has come out of chaos, if your life is blowing up and there's been so much craziness on, I, it doesn't matter where we're at, we don't have to be a victim to it, but God is able to turn it around for our good and for his glory. And instead of being a uh, one that was broken, God puts us back together and we help heal other people. Instead of being one that was just abused and we we can't come out of it. God then helps us, heals us up so we can pull somebody out of it. So wherever we're at, God turns it around so that instead of you just surviving, you become one that helps others to survive and come forward in it all. God created me on purpose for a purpose. He also start, reveals it through walking through open doors. You know, sometimes I, I think we make it too complicated. Well, uh, finding our purpose. We're so afraid of making a mistake where we something we might not be good at. But you know what? If you'll just walk through an open door, God will begin to show up in so many ways. Everything um, begins to throw, go through as you just try things. Maybe you're in a place where you just need to step up and do something, an opportunity in front of you. Who knows that you've been come into the spaces and the places that you are, except for such a time as this. God could have caused you to be born at any other time in history, any other place, but here and right now. You might have been in another nation and now you've come here. It's not just so that you can have a better job, although we pray you do. It's so that you can find the purpose of God right here, right now. I was 18 years old, had no confidence, had no understanding of how God could use me. And somebody invited me to, hey, could you help me on Wednesday night and, and start with this group of seven to 12 year olds, 30 or 40 of them. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. He said, you can do it. I believe in you. So he helped me and showed me what to do. And Michael, Michael Gibney, after a few weeks, he played a fast one on me. He said, I can't be there next week. You have to do it. And I just stepped through the open door had a little tiny bit of training and I took a step and suddenly I began to step forward more into the purpose of God for my life. Ken and Debbie Thiessen, who we were doing camp together one year and the next year uh, they, were, they weren't able to do it. They were, I think Kevin had been born or something like that. And suddenly we were thrust into, now Shanda and I were leading in our like 21, 22 years old and taking uh, 50, 60, nine to 12 year olds, wait and see was our theme. And if some of them are watching right now, except they're old now. And little by little, step by step, through open doors, trial and error, through experimentation and discernment and the affirmation of other, God was moving us more and more into his purpose. I love this verse. I think it'll come up there. So whatever you do, work at, uh, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Somebody say whatever. Louder than that. Thanks, Shanda. She's in the room. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. The next one, Colossians 3 and 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It's working for the Lord because God created me on purpose for a purpose. And sometimes I just got to go through an open door and see what God would reveal. And finally, whatever conversation, whatever meal you make, whatever text you send, whatever email you send, whatever phone call you make, whatever craft you do, whatever you're doing at work, whatever you write, whatever you study, whatever you speak, whatever you post on social media, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. In other words, it doesn't matter. There's no secular and sacred. Whatever I do, let God use me and I'll be part of making a difference. And finally, a God encounter. Never underestimate the power of a God encounter. Don't underestimate what God can do in a moment. Just right there in the gym. I was 13 years old. And over there in the corner where the stage used to be, there was preaching an old Texan by the name of Dr. Howard. And he said a message about surrendering our life to God and just saying yes to God. And I can remember as a 13-year-old with glasses, lots of zits, no confidence, couldn't speak, so afraid of myself and my shadow and standing. And at the end of it all, I just remember standing. I can almost pick the spot in the room even right now. And I just said, with tears streaming down my face, and I was just said, God, 
If you will use me, I'll say yes to you. I don't know how you could do something with me, but if you will, I'll say yes to you. And I just surrender and surrender my agenda, surrender my path, surrender God, my plan, and just say, I knew what I wanted, but God, whatever you want. And I'm not saying that to say, oh, good job on me. I'm just saying that to illustrate that a God encounter changed the direction of my life because I didn't see how God could use me or do something with me. But a moment in the presence of God began to see what God could do. It's a story of the Bible. Thomas, who was, after Jesus was crucified, one of the disciples, he said, I'm not sure if this is really real. He, then he had an encounter with Jesus and the, the one who was doubting the most he walked nearly 6,000 miles to the south of India to Kerala state and there's still monuments about him 2,000 years ago and established the gospel in the south of India. A man who was a doubter had an encounter and became this one who just went for it in God. What could God do with an encounter with you? When's the last time you had an encounter with Jesus? A fresh encounter. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, be filled and keep on being filled with the Spirit because God can set the agenda. God can begin to, if we let him from the inside out, change the way we think so that we will begin to understand the good, pleasing, and perfect will or purpose of God for our life because you are needed in this season. And notice I didn't say in the church because the church is advancing and being built by Jesus. Yes, you have a spot and a place. You also are in the kingdom of God because when we step into the world, we are going as ambassadors of the kingdom, making a difference wherever we are. We're establishing and moving in a kingdom that's ever advancing. You were born for a purpose. Be aware of what moves you. Step through open doors and ask Jesus for a fresh encounter because God created me on purpose for a purpose. And when we work together in the church, because the church is not an in, one individual, it's the people of God called out. When we work together in the kingdom, there's a kingdom with a king, he's leading. When we do that together, we will see lives change. We will see families change. We will see neighborhoods transform. We will see nations change as we do that together. That's what happens that's how things happen. That's how differences are made. If you're a knife, be a knife. If you need to make some zest, be that. If God's called you to want to stir it up, be that. But be what God has called you to be. You have a space, you have a place, God's hand is on your life, and you are called to be one that will make a difference you will be one through the purpose of how God's gifted you, through the disappointments that you've been through, through the things that he's healed you of, through the gifts that he's given you, through the environments that he places you in, using who you are, you can make a difference. In a world gone crazy, it needs a church full of people that say, God, my hands are open. Reshape my thinking. Don't let me be governed and conformed by what's going on around me. But from the inside out, help me to press out against what's going on so that I can know and live in the purpose of God, good, pleasing, and perfect for my life and for the world that desperately needs the hope of Jesus that's in you so that the light can shine, the kingdom can advance, and the church, you, can be built. Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you that you came not just to save us, but to use us to transform the world. That as you transform us, we transform the world through your kingdom coming and your will being done, through you changing our thinking. And Lord, I'm praying for fresh encounters right now in the name of Jesus, that we would allow our hearts to be stirred by God-sized opportunities that might be that we've been neglecting or ignoring or trying to brush aside, that we would let the truth, that the life of God that's in us, we have to steward it, Lord Jesus, and allow you to use us. Lord, thank you for your church that you're building it. It's not all on our shoulders. We do our part, whether it's the knife, the spoon, or the zest maker, and, and you advance so powerfully in our lives and through our lives. Thank you that you've created us on purpose, for a purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna go to the post show. Come on. So, so good to be reminded that as Christians, when we look back, 
and we look at the canvas of what God's doing in this world, there's a pocket just for us. We are created in purpose for a purpose. So good. Yeah, yeah, so, so good. Anyways, guys, we're so grateful to have you tuning in with us. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy the rest of this week and the beautiful weather outside. And we'll see you guys next week again for church. See you guys.